Remember him? He was a principal, no pun intended, in a case that caused a sensation in the late 90s. A Seattle teacher having sex with her 13-year-old student bearing two children. The couple called it true love. The courts called it a crime. On August 4th, Mary Kay Letourneau will be released from a Washington prison after six and a half years. Forbidden from seeing her young lover, it's a scandal they'll always remember, but how quickly we forget. I did something that I had no right to do, morally or legally. It was wrong, and I am sorry. I give you my word that it will not happen again. In 1997, Mary Kay Letourneau begged a Seattle judge for her freedom just months after the former teacher had been arrested for having sex with her student, Vili Fulau. He was 13 when their relationship began. She was 34, a wife, a mother. Letourneau, who gave birth to their child in May of that year, pleaded guilty to second-degree child rape. Billy insists he was not her victim and described in court their every encounter. We had sex in the gym. We had sex in the girls' bathroom. We had sex in the classroom. Letourneau was given a six-month jail sentence with an order from the judge barring her from ever seeing young Billy again. You are being granted the opportunity for treatment in the community rather than in prison. Whether you stay out of prison is completely within your hands. She was released in January of 1998, and less than a month later, Seattle police picked up the ex-teacher and the boy having sex in a car. This time, the judge showed no compassion. This case is not about a flawed system. It is about an opportunity that you foolishly squandered. She sentenced Letourneau, pregnant again, to serve out her seven-and-a-half-year sentence. Their two children would be raised by Villy's mother. In less than three weeks, Mary Kay Letourneau will be freed from prison, facing the future as a convicted sex offender, barred from ever seeing Villy in the spotlight once again. How quickly we forget. It is such a bizarre story, and it is certainly not over yet. A new chapter, in fact, about to begin. Journalist Greg Olson has delved deeper into this story than perhaps anyone else. He actually spoke to Vili Fulau just last week, and his book, If Loving You Is Wrong, explored all sides of this bizarre, yet no doubt mesmerizing drama. I spoke with Greg Olson earlier today about Letourneau's release from prison. Greg, what do you think is going to happen? Are these two going to end up together? Because Mary Kay Letourneau has been banned for, for life from, from seeing him. That's right. Uh, he does need to go before the courts and get that lifetime ban lifted. Um, it's so that's a possibility? He, that is a possibility. He hasn't done so yet. But uh, I understand that uh, you know, he might be getting some help. Some lawyer might be helping him do that, which he needs some help. And, and, and it seems from your interview they both do want to see each other, yes? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, obviously they have two children to raise, uh, either together or, or separately. And I think that even after all these years have passed, that uh, there really still is some sort of a love affair going on between the two of them. And, and we'll see them together somehow in the future. Vili, who's 21, said this to you. I've been imagining and thinking about what our life would be like together for a long time, but I can't say what will happen. No one can. I want to know what her true feelings are first. What is he like? I mean, a, a, as you spent time with him, uh, he's 21 years old. Um, what's your was, impression? Yeah, Anderson, I was really impressed by him, considering really everything that he's gone through. I mean, he's lived in this tempest, this media tempest, for what, seven or, or eight years, really. He could be, you know, off the deep end by now, but the man that I saw, and I always like to stress he's a man now, he's 21, he's not the 13-year-old boy, you know, that she saw and, and fell in love with. He's a grown man. And I feel like he's strong enough now to maybe make decisions that are best for him, uh, which is uh, kind of good news, don't you think? But she was always saying that, you know, she saw something in him that other people didn't see, that, that he was strong, that he was wise beyond his years. Um, back then, did he seem that way to you? Well, you know, as a kid, I didn't see any of that. I, you know, and I don't really know anyone who did. But when I look at the man today, I wonder maybe there were some things that Mary was able to see that the rest of us couldn't. And not that he's wise beyond his years, but he's certainly a survivor and has been through a lot and seems to have his head on straight right now. Does society treat this differently? I mean, if this was a man doing this to a boy or a man doing this to a, a girl, 
Um, would it be thought of in the same way? I mean, would the word relationship even be used? That's right. I mean, sometimes I get confused. You know, is it a crime story? Is it a love story? Uh, was it a, was it consensual? Was it a rape? You know, all of that seems to be, you know, fodder for for discussion. We really don't know. What we do know now, though, is he's 21, and as a young man, I think he's got the right to say whether he wants to be with her or not, and she has the right to say, you know, whether she should or not herself. So. I think we're sort of out of it right now. And, and, it, and I don't want to pry too much into their privacy because they, they've lived out of the spotlight now, but, but what's in general happened to her family, I mean, to her kids, to her former husband? That's right. She, she divorced Steve Letourneau uh, several years after this all happened, and the four children, the four oldest children, moved up to Alaska. They did eventually, after the divorce, did get visitation with their mother in prison. Uh, they visited semi-regularly, not, not as often as the court allowed. Uh, so she has had a lot of contact or some contact with those children. Um, the two littlest children that uh, she had with Billy Fulau, she sees quite regularly in prison and is very close to those girls. They're being raised by Fulau's mother. Um, what's going to happen? I mean, are, are, is she going to try to get custody of them? Could there be a, a custody fight? I think so. Mary has, you know, she's been deprived of motherhood and she always views herself and always has as a great mother. So I think she's going to want to raise those children in her own home obviously with Vili, but it's going to be tough because Suna Fulau has done a great job raising those kids and she's not going to let them go easily. Has there been any acknowledgement on her part that she did anything wrong, that she did anything inappropriate or illegal? The, well, the only thing she ever acknowledged to me was that she felt the adultery part of the relationship was wrong, that she was married to Steve Letourneau and that her involvement with Vili was wrong on that level. She's never really apologized for the fact that she loves him and that she wanted to be with him. Uh, she's never apologized to her own children. So she's got this idea that the adultery, that's the crime, uh, it was a personal crime, and that the rest of us really should back out of it. It is a, a, just a fascinating story. Greg Olson, thanks for joining us.